Hello and welcome if you're new to my channel and if you're a subscriber, a warm welcome back. In this video, I'm going to be talking about my luxury wish list for 2023. I'm Anesu Gonda and I produce educational luxury content for anyone after the finer things, whether you're into luxury, but you want to focus more on quality under the radar brands, or you're new to money and wanting to learn how to navigate the terrain or you're young and starting out in life and wanting to reap the benefits of buying quality from the get-go, then my content is geared towards you. The first item on my wish list is sateen bed linen. All of my bed linen at the moment is percale and percale is a weave that's cool, it's crisp, it's uh, breathable, it's perfect for um, hot climates, for hot summers, for hot weather. It's fantastic for that. My partner is a hot sleeper and hence we use the percale all year round. Um, in the winter, throw a blanket on top and I have a hot water bottle on my side. But I think I may be winning the battle to introduce sateen to the rotation, provided it's light sateen as opposed to, for example, your very heavy Ultimate Giza from Fret 8000 thread count, which is very heavy. It's incredibly warm, but it's also um, very shiny. I don't like the shiny element and also it'll be too heavy. Something around 300 thread count will be perfect. I'm considering three, maybe four at an absolute push uh, sets which I can use on rotation so wash uh, and, re and repeat and try something else all through winter and see how the linen holds up. The question now is do I go for American brands do I go for European brands? Last year I was in the United States and I looked at a number of brands more so mid-tier going to the top end. Um, my initial gut reaction is Hemstitch from Matuk or um, Sfera or push the boat out and one of the sets um, is E. Braun & Co. Or look at some of the mid-tier brands that I didn't get a chance to explore when I was in the United States. So brands like Cuddle Down, Brooklinen, uh, Bolin Branch, uh, Pure Parima, who also recently got in touch. So the question is, what do I go for? Or on the European side, um, end of last year I was in Italy and I looked at a number of brands and there are two that really stood out and I want to explore further. Revolta Camignani, and also Beltrami. So I'm not too sure which way I'm gonna go. I have options, I have three sets I'd like to buy. So it'll be a mixture of some of those brands, um, lighter sateen, and I'll keep you posted on uh, what I eventually decide. The second item on my wish list is dinnerware. I currently have only one dinner set, Anmut from Villeroyan and Bok. It's what I use every day, special occasions, Come rain, come sunshine, it's what I use every single day. But what I would like to do is two things. The first is add an alfresco dining set. Um, outdoor space in the United Kingdom comes at an absolute premium. I'm lucky enough to have a tiny garden um, which has been beautifully landscaped and I use it a lot in the summer. As you know, um, I record in the garden and it's used every single day. Most meals are eaten out there. So I get a lot of mileage from it, a lot of entertaining. And what the pandemic has done is just heightened the need to just elevate the whole dining experience. Coupled with what I mentioned in the previous video, um, luxury over 40. And my focus is very much on experiences. I really like entertaining. But I also like entertaining myself and my family and just elevating the whole dining experience for everybody involved. So the dinner set for Alfresco, I've been thinking about this for a couple of years, but this year I hope to find something I like. And the second is accessories to work with the Anmut. Accessories that will work for a number of different um, dinner events, whether it's date night or it's entertaining family, friends, a special occasion just a carefully considered selection of accessories. On the fresco side, um, there are two retailers I've spoken about in my dinnerware video, which I'm going to attach above, uh, Conran Shop and also Heels and Sun. They are two fantastic brands that work with a number of artisanal brands and they use a lot of colors. So that'll be fantastic for uh, an alfresco dining set. And the question is, do I get something that's very colorful or buy colorful pieces, mix and match, and tone it down with something muted, 
uh, mix it with the anmut or just get something that is mixed and matched so you have colorful with muted just to um, give it a little more versatility and then looking at the accessories um, there are a number of brands i'd like to consider by the time this video goes out i will have come back from paris and i hope my schedule permits i would like to see when i'm out there uh, marie uh, dash i've seen some beautiful um, dinnerware and accessories uh, on social media i'd also like to take a look at uh, la tulle de la loupe and then I'd also like to take a look at Astia de Valati. Astia de Valati first came onto my radar when I was in the United States last year. Um, they have collaborated with John Derian, who does a lot of decoupage, and they've produced beautiful pieces. In the United Kingdom, Astia de Valati has quite the cult following. Their stuff is incredibly popular. It's waitlisted. Um, and so I'd like to just explore adding a few pieces, um, if there's something I like, from there. But um, I would like to, to choose a carefully selected, well thought out range of accessories. So that's something that I really want to do this year and enjoy the garden, elevate the whole experience, um, beautiful food, even better wine, fantastic company. So I'm excited about that because in-house entertainment is really important to me. The next item on my wish list. Well, there are three items I would like from this particular brand. It's a British stationery brand called Smithson, And I wanted to keep the items in the boxes uh, to show you the boxes, but there are three items I'd like from Smithson's. And then the day before my birthday, I decided to treat myself to two of the three items. And I thought, let me leave the items in the boxes so I can show you the boxes. And then I will superimpose pictures of the items um, as I talk you through the items. Smithson is a British stationery brand um, and it's a brand that if you were to ask a number of people to name uh, brands that uphold the British standard of craftsmanship, uh, the prestige, the heritage, invariably Smithson will feature on that list. And it's also a brand that has one, not two, but three royal warrants. And if you've been following my channel for a while, you'll know I'm absolutely fanatical about brands with royal warrants because they speak volumes about the quality of the products. And Smithson is a brand I have looked at incredibly longingly from a distance and wanted their stationery for a very long time, but I've always been put off by the cost. But as I mentioned in what is going to be the video, that is the precursor for all of my videos for this year, luxury items to buy in your 40s, the underlying message to go for the very best you can afford. And it's all about experiences. I'm all about elevated uh, or elevating whatever the experiences that you are partaking in. And I miss this whole concept of using a pen or a pencil. You can go for days, weeks without using a pen. I used to have a diary as a child and I miss it. And I thought, why not get a pocket diary where I can jot my schedule for my videos instead of using a planner as I've done in the past, but I can keep it in my handbag. It's something small, keep it in my handbag out and about. If I want to change things or want to add something to my schedule, it's very easy for me to just jot it into the appropriate day. And then the second is a journal. I currently use a journal, but it's just a, a paper journal where I write all my notes for my videos. I enjoy creating content and I wanted to get a journal I would really enjoy and appreciate using. And I thought, take the plunge and go for Smithson leather bound journal. It's on sale at the moment for 80 pounds, full price 160 pounds. Uh, the pocket diary is not on sale. It retails for 45 pounds, but it's 140 pounds, very well spent. I also had my initials embossed onto uh, the leather journal. Um, so I'm really excited. It's leather um, with the gilt edge, the gold gilt edge around the edges and then feather light paper. The third item I'd like to buy from Smithson a little later in the year is stationery. Um, again, something that's very old fashioned, it's grown up and it's something I enjoy and I miss writing letters. I miss writing notes to people instead of uh, sending an email or text message to invite someone to dinner um, or to thank someone for a dinner invitation or for dinner. I would like to write letters. I'd like to write a card and send that to someone. I really miss that. 
I appreciate it. And I put a lot of thought when I write cards to people. So that's something I want to do. I will definitely talk about the stationery that I eventually buy in the shorts. So please do subscribe so you don't miss out on that. The next item on my wish list is jewelry. 2023 is going to be a big year for me in terms of padding out um, my what I consider my core selection of key jewelry pieces to have. My style is fairly classic. Um, I like feminine styles. I'm all about elegance. I like simplicity in the elegance with the focus being very much on quality. I'm not big on statement or bold pieces. I like dainty jewelry. Dainty jewelry to me is classier and the focus is on quality. So it's something that's dainty, but it's the best or the finest quality uh, precious metals or, or, or gemstones, depending on what it is. So the focus is very much on the quality and the simplicity, the beauty and just the simple elegance of the item. So that's where my focus is going to be. When it comes to jewelry pieces, considering I'm fairly classic um, and I like things that are feminine, that are simple, the core collection for me encompasses studs, gold, silver, diamonds. Um, you also have in there a pendant or two. You have a, a bracelet or bangles for your wrist. And bear in mind, I'm not somebody who's into stacking, but just a dainty bangle or bracelet. And the emphasis is very much on the quality and the design. Um, and then throw in there as well, uh, a dress ring and then a couple of other just uh, plainer rings um, pearls whether it's studs or hoops and then a pearl necklace and then the final item is of course a spectacular timepiece within what I think constitutes a good core selection of jewelry pieces I'm going to be focused on the studs I already have all of the silver studs I would like I would like to add the gold studs um, I have a silver necklace. I'd like to add a gold necklace, uh, a pendant or a bracelet or two. And then, of course, as you know, I've mentioned before, timepiece, I'm on a wait list. And then uh, I'd also like to throw, if the budget permits, a little later in the year, pearls. Um, I, I'm not sure if I would like to go for studs or um, hoop um, hoop pearls or a drop pearl for example so i look forward to just talking you through the different brands that i'll be exploring um, some are a little more modern uh, contemporary in their designs and some are a little more traditional but i'm excited and i look forward to padding that out with you and talking you through the different brands and the dynamics i'll be considering last but by no means least on my wish list for 2023 is handbags and as I mentioned in the precursor video, I'm not a fan of buying many handbags, having a massive collection with 10, 20, 30, 40 plus handbags. Handbags you buy, you sell, uh, you buy, some you carry, some you don't even carry. Just having a huge selection. I'm all about putting together a very carefully curated selection of um, bags, bags that work with your lifestyle, your taste, your budget, um, bags that you wear, you carry all the time, you get your money's worth, you enjoy the quality, um, you watch the patina as it develops over the life of the bag and you just carry them forever. That is what I'm a firm believer of. And of course, you buy the very best you can afford. I have been asked by uh, one of my subscribers to talk about luxury minimalism, especially in the context of handbags. And it's something I'm going to do during the course of the year as part of the viewer comment response series. If you would like me to extract this part of the video where I recommend the seven core styles to have in your collection, then I'm more than happy to, uh, for each style, to recommend different styles of bags, different brands, um, across the different levels of luxury. I think that would be an interesting video and I think it would be good to add to the current conversations that are happening online um, and just help add and um, create more content that is of benefit to people. If it's of interest, please let me know in the comments down below. But the selection of seven are what I'm going to be working towards myself personally. This year I hazard a guess and, and, and would say I think I 
we'll get two, possibly three of them, but it's a dynamic list I'll be adding to over the years. The seven that I recommend having in your collection, your core collection of bags, the first is a practical, roomy, everyday workhorse bag. When I say workhorse, I mean a bag, a brand that is a short quality. It has stood the test of time. It's a bag you can wear all the time, day in, day out, and it'll, it'll, it'll wear well. A, a bag that comes to mind that I'm heavily inspired by for this category is the Cecia bag from Laurel Piana. And in particular, in the grained calfskin and the large size. I think the grained calfskin is a lot more hard wearing in comparison to the smooth calfskin. Although one of my wonderful subscribers, Cicloman, has two of the Cecia bags in the smooth calfskin. And she tells me, contrary to popular opinion, the smooth calfskin is a lot more robust than people give it credit for. So that's food for thought. I'm also inspired uh, by a recent brand I've just started talking about, Colombo, and in particular the Dion Soft in the grained calfskin. Or if I win the lottery, when I win the lottery later in the year, elevating to the black matte crop, that would be an absolute dream for an everyday bag for me. The second style is a clutch, uh, a clutch you can wear to um, weddings, cocktail parties, to charity galas, for example. The question for me is, do I push the boat out and get something exotic from a brand like Lana Marks in Crocodile, or something in calfskin, uh, a structured uh, clutch, the Gabrielle from Moina? I'm not too sure, but two interesting uh, concepts I'm mulling over. The third is a gym bag. Um, the question for me with the gym bag is, do I go with a bag that's incredibly practical, it's very much geared for the gym, for carrying exercise, um, sweaty exercise wear, uh, from an exercise brand like Nike or Lululemon, for example, or do I push the boat, which is what I really want. Um, I, it's incredibly decadent, but for a gym bag, I would really, really love the all-day um, Perion from Metier, the big slouchy suede bag as a gym bag, um, incredibly decadent. But it would be so, it would be just amazing for me because I enjoy exercising and then I have a gym bag I really like. To me, that's the ultimate. Go for the best you can afford and elevating that whole experience for myself. Um, the fourth style is weekend bag. A bag you can carry for one, stays off either one or three days, for example. Again, a few options from Metier. Metier is a brand I will have at least one style from within my collection of seven core styles. When it comes to weekend bags, again, the, the Weekender from um, the Perion collection from Metier, or a large cabas, for example, or they have a market bag. But there's also another brand I want to explore. It's a British brand called Tan and & Crawl, and they have a number of weekend bag options worth exploring. The fifth is a work bag, a structured formal bag. And there are a number of bags I'm considering. You have a large size Tompette from Delvaux, 2424 from Hermes. You have my favorite from Bali, the Sander that I'm considering. And then you have an absolute swoon-worthy bag. I'm not allowed to talk about it, so I'm being a little cheeky, but Lorna have a new bag coming out later this year, and it's a real power bag. It's a bag that'll fit very comfortably within the structured formal work to tote context, or, not sorry, not work tote, the structured formal work bag context, or the sixth category, a power bag. Sixth, power bag, a head turning, a bag that commands attention. You walk into a room and everybody turns to look at your bag. People talk about it. It's a conversation starter. That is a must in your collection. And the Lorna bag, as I mentioned, would fit in there as well. Um, I would also say bags like, for example, from Velextra, you have um, the Brera, you have the Cide, you have Brion from Delvo. Power bags are very much you elevated every day. You want something that's stand out, something that will work for meetings, for funerals and everything else in between. And then the last, the seventh is a crossbody, a bag that um, you just 
throw on crossbody, freeze your hands, you can do other things. It's a nice bag, easy to carry, beautifully made. And it's something you enjoy using, something that works across the board. You want to carry just a, little, a few essentials. You need a few more things. It's not too big, not too heavy. It's comfortable. I'm thinking along the lines, for example, of Moina. You have slightly bigger crossbody, you have the Voyage. Slightly smaller, you have the Flory. Or a recent style I've uh, just started talking about from Della Luna Venezia, the Venice Baby. So a number of options to consider. But that's seven core styles I recommend you working towards to cu uh, curate your collection of handbags. Depending on your lifestyle, you add one, you take away one, or you keep them as is. But that's my luxury wish list for 2023. I'm really excited. Uh, they're pieces that I've been wanting to get over the years, and I thought, go for it, do it now. And I look forward to padding it out. I think a little different to the average wish list um, on social media, but if anybody has anything similar, please let me know in the comments down below. I'd love to find out what you're doing, get some inspiration, get some ideas going and so forth. But as always, do subscribe so you don't miss out on future content. And I look forward to seeing you all again in the next video.